Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky visited the port city of Odessa on Thursday. He inspected the damaged cathedral which was hit by Russian missiles last week. Zelensky also paid a visit to the medical center in the city. He awarded medals to doctors and nurses and also thanked them for their service. Russian President Vladimir Putin spoke at the Russia-Africa summit in St. Petersburg on Thursday. He told African leaders that Russia was ready to replace Ukraine as the supplier for grain. He also said that Russia was willing to give free grain to at least six African nations. These were Burkina Faso, Zimbabwe, Mali, Somalia, Central African Republic and Eritrea. Putin added that other African customers would not have to pay delivery fees for the grain. Meanwhile, Putin told African leaders that he was studying the Ukraine peace plan that was proposed by them. Last month, an African delegation visited Kiev and Moscow. They proposed a draft peace plan to Zelensky and Putin. However, it failed to gain traction among either leaders. Now, Putin says he is reconsidering the draft. North Korea displayed a massive show of force with a military parade in capital Pyongyang on Thursday. The parade included intercontinental ballistic missiles, tanks and drones. Russia's Defence Minister Sergei Shoigu also attended the parade. He had been invited on behalf of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. A delegation from China was also invited as guests. The military parade was held to mark the 70th anniversary of the Korean War. Chinese President Xi Jinping met Georgia's Prime Minister in China's Chengdu city today. Both leaders agreed to enhance cooperation and friendly ties. The Georgian Prime Minister said that his country followed the One China policy. He also said that Georgia supported China's Belt and Road Initiative. US Secretary of State Antony Blinken met Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese. The two leaders met in the Australian city of Brisbane today. Blinken also met his Australian counterpart, Penny Wong. Blinken's visit to Australia is part of his Pacific Nation tour. Earlier, he paid a visit to New Zealand and Tonga. Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni met US President Joe Biden in Washington on Thursday. The two leaders spoke about boosting economic and trade ties between the two nations. They also discussed the ongoing war in Ukraine. Meloni said, and I quote, Italy will continue supporting Kiev. At least six people were killed after a bomb exploded near the Said Zainab shrine near Syria's capital Damascus. Over 20 people have been injured in the blast. Security forces have sealed off the area. This is the second attack this week targeting the shrine. No outfit or group has claimed responsibility for the attack. Tens of thousands of protesters took to the streets in Israel's Tel Aviv. They demonstrated against the judicial overhaul. The protesters demanded the government to roll back the judicial reform. Remember, the first part of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's judicial overhaul was passed in the parliament on Monday. The law will prevent the Supreme Court from overruling some government decisions. Niger's army command is supporting the coup in the West African nation. This comes after some soldiers detained Niger President Mohammed Bazoum. Thousands of civilians are also supporting the coup. They gathered in front of the country's National Assembly and set fire to nearby vehicles and buildings. Record-breaking rainfalls in India's financial capital of Mumbai have brought life to a standstill. The IMD issued a yellow alert for the city. It expects Mumbai to receive heavy rainfall on Friday. Schools and colleges in some districts have been shut. Typhoon Doksuri hit Taiwan's Kinmen Island on Friday. It brought heavy rain and strong winds. The typhoon has toppled trees and left thousands of homes without power. Over 300 domestic and international flights were suspended. Railway services have also been halted. The storm has now made its final push to southeastern China. Wildfires continue to rage in Syria's coastal region amid high temperatures. New footage shows blazing fires in the countryside 
around the fourth city of Latkia. Reports say temperatures across the country have risen 6 degrees Celsius higher than average. Croatia has been battling a major wildfire on the island of Chiovo. This is on the Adriatic coast. Reports say the fire had spread quickly because of strong winds. However, it has caused no damage to residential buildings so far. Authorities have deployed over a hundred firefighters to fight the flames. A growing wildfire in the US state of Colorado has triggered evacuations. The US Forest Service said the fire began on Wednesday. It has now spread across 680 acres. Multiple fire crews and helicopters are now battling to douse the fire. Officials in the US Midwest are bracing for a possible wave of heat-related emergency calls. Nearly 40% of the US population is facing heat advisories. The Southwest has been particularly hot this month. Meanwhile, more hot weather is expected in the Midwest and in the Northeast in the coming days. On Wednesday, the National Weather Service reported a record high temperature of 48 degrees Celsius. July 2023 is the hottest month ever recorded. This is according to the United Nations. The effects of July's heat wave have been seen across the world. Thousands of tourists fled wildfires on the Greek island of Rhodes. Many more suffered baking heat across the US Southwest. Meanwhile, temperatures in parts of China soared as high as 52 degrees Celsius. Meanwhile, the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has issued a warning. He said, and I quote, the era of global boiling has arrived. Finance Guterres also said that financial steps are needed to support accelerated climate action. He has also called for new emission reduction targets from G20 members. 2022 was the warmest year on record in the UK. This is according to Britain's Met Office. It was also the first year in which temperature was recorded above 40 degrees Celsius. Meanwhile, experts have warned the unprecedented heat is a sign of more things to come. Residents of a village in Palestine are enduring severe water shortages. The crisis has been aggravated by the recent heat wave. Residents are now looking at alternative water sources. They are either purchasing water tanks at inflated prices or constructing makeshift wells. These two are quickly drying out. Moving to business, semiconductor company AMD has said it is planning to invest about $400 million in India. The company is planning to set up its largest design centre in the country's southern city of Bengaluru. AMD's chief technology officer rather, announced this at the annual semiconductor conference Semicon India 2023. The conference, conference was held in the Indian state of Gujarat. The European Central Bank has raised its interest rates by 25 basis points. With the latest hike, the ECB's deposit rate now stands at 3.75%. This is the highest interest rate level seen since 2000. This means the ECB rates are at a 23-year high. Cryptocurrency exchange Binance and its CEO Chang Peng Zhao has filed a motion. This is to dismiss a complaint against the company. The complaint was filed by the US Commodity Futures Trading Commission or the CFTC. The CFTC is an independent agency of the US that regulates markets. In March, the CFTC had sued Binance, Zhao and the firm's former chief compliance officer Samuel Lim. The regulator had alleged that the company and its officials violated federal regulations. They were also accused of operating an illegal exchange and a sham compliance program. French luxury group Kering will buy a 30% stake in Italian fashion label Valentino. It will buy the stake for a whopping $1.87 billion. The company will also have the option to acquire 100% of the brand by the year 2028. The deal is the latest in a series of shakeups in the French company. The move is aimed at stimulating Kering's growth as sales at its star brand Gucci stagnates. 
Shares of home and kitchen products make a Tupperware continued their unexplained rise on Thursday. The company's share prices rose more than 50%. This has put its stock up nearly 350% during the last five trading days. This is despite recent concerns about the firm's business. In April, Tupperware raised doubts about its ability to continue business amid weakening sales. Turkish food delivery startup Getir is withdrawing from Italy, Spain and Portugal. Ultra-fast grocery delivery startups like Getir boomed during the COVID-19 pandemic. However, they have seen a post-pandemic dip, dip after that. This is after consumers return to in-person shopping in stores. Meanwhile, the company says it will continue to operate in the US, the UK, Germany, the Netherlands and Turkey. Getir says these geographies generate 96% of the company's total revenues. A British trade union has said workers at two Amazon facilities will strike in early August. This is over an ongoing pay dispute. Workers from the company's office in Rugeley will stage a walkout on the 3rd and 4th of August. Meanwhile, staff in the Coventry Centre will strike on the 4th and 5th of August. However, Amazon says that they regularly review their pay to ensure the wages are competitive. X, formerly known as Twitter, now has a new account on the social media platform. After rebranding itself, Twitter took control of a handle whose username is the letter X. Let us say, or rather reports say, the account initially belonged to a person named Jean X Wang. However, X has now taken over Wang's account without compensating him. Reports say executives at Meta platforms are exploring retention strategies for users on their new platform threads. This is after the app lost more than half of its users in the weeks following its launch. It is adopting strategies like showing important posts from threads to Instagram users. The company is also mulling over adding new features to the app like a desktop mode and a search functionality. Women are more likely to lose jobs to artificial intelligence than men. This is according to a new report by the McKinsey Global Institute. The study found that nearly 8 in 10 women will be forced to switch companies or lose their job to AI. It added that industries that are expected to shrink the most are food services, office support, customer service and sales. Women are overrepresented in these sectors and hold more low-paying jobs than men. Therefore, they stand to be more affected. Moving to sports, in cricket, India beat the West Indies in the first one-day international by five wickets. India bowled out West Indies in 23 overs and had to chase a target of just 114 runs. India now has a 1-0 lead in the three-match ODI series against West Indies. In football, the match between Argentina and South Africa in the FIFA Women's World Cup ended in a draw. Both the countries scored two goals against each other and secured one point in the tournament. Argentina will now face Sweden in the next round, while South Africa will play against Italy. Meanwhile, Nigeria stunned co-hosts Australia 3-2 at the FIFA Women's World Cup. Now to this. To qualify for the final 16, Australia must now win their next match against Canada. Nigeria will next play Ireland in their last group match. The Indian men's football team will play against Qatar and Kuwait in the second round of the FIFA World Cup 2026 AFC qualifiers. The official draw ceremony took place at the AFC house in Malaysia on Thursday. A total of 36 football teams will take part in the second round of qualifiers. India, including other 26 countries, have gotten direct entries for the second round. Jordan Henderson, the former captain of the English Premier League club Liverpool, has joined the Saudi club Al Ittifaq. He will play for the Saudi club on a deal until 2026. This comes after Henderson recently posted a goodbye message on social media, confirming his Liverpool exit. The 33-year-old midfielder has captained the club for 12 years. In tennis, world number one Iga Swiatek reached the quarterfinal in the Poland Open. She beat her US opponent 6-2 and 6-2 in the women's singles category to secure the spot. 
Shontek will now play against the eighth seeded Czech player, Linda Noskova, in her next match. World number three, Daniel Medvedev, has withdrawn from the US Open tune up tournament due to injury. The 27 year old Russian player lost in the Wimbledon semi finals earlier this month. The 2023 US Open will start from the 28th August and continue until the 10th of September. In badminton, Indian shuttler Lakshya Sen reached the semi final in the Japan Open. He secured a 21-15-21-19 win against his Japanese opponent in the men's singles category. This is going to be his third successive semi-final after the Canada and US Open. He will next play against Jonathan Christie of Indonesia. In Formula 1, Red Bull racer Max Verstappen is, to, is set to receive a 5-place grid penalty. This will be for Sunday's Belgian Grand Prix. Grid penalties are given when racers exceed the allocated number of engine components, gearboxes or other car components. The penalty comes after Verstappen exceeded his gearbox allowance. He will now be lined up 6th on the grid position for Sunday's race. Ukrainian fencer Olga Karlan was disqualified from the World Fencing Championship. This is after she refused to shake hands with Russia's Anna Smonova after beating her in the tournament. Smonova was competing as a neutral athlete at the event since Russia is banned from participating at such tournaments. After the incident, the Ukrainian said that the rules have to change at World Championships. In the world of entertainment, the 2023 Emmy Awards have been delayed. This is due to the ongoing writers and actors strike in Hollywood. This year marks the 75th anniversary of the Emmy Awards. The ceremony was slated to take place between the 9th and 10th of September. Organizers say they will have to postpone the Emmy Awards till January 2024. Rapper Snoop Dogg has cancelled his show at the Hollywood Ball in support of the writers and actors' strike. Snoop Dogg made the announcement on his Instagram. The rapper had already delayed his concert from June to October. However, with the SAG after strike now in its 10th week, Snoop Dogg decided to completely cancel his concert. Taylor Swift is currently on her global concert spree called the ERAS Tour. The tour has broken summer records and sales are nearing $1 billion. However, a recent study has shown that Taylor Swift's ERAS Tour is making a mark on the economy of the US. Fans are spending on hotels, air travel, food and other expenses. The study says that increased consumer spending is likely to pump back $5 billion into the US economy. A woman threw her bra at rapper Drake during his New York City concert. The singer was seen sniffing the garment after it landed on stage. Drake then said, and I quote, locate this woman immediately. After the incident, the woman went viral. She gained 50,000 followers on Instagram within an hour. She was also approached by Playboy magazine for potential photo shoot. The Queen of Pop, Madonna, spoke for the first time after her medical scare. She said, and I quote, I am able to move my body and dance. I am the luckiest star in the world. She also thanked her fans and well-wishers who wished her when she was in the hospital. Madonna said she is still recovering from her medical emergency. In June, the 64-year-old was rushed to a hospital after she was found unresponsive at her home. The Museum of Madame Tussauds revealed a wax statue of popular icon Beyoncé. The wax figure shows Beyoncé's ensemble from her Coachella performance back in 2018. It took 20 wax artists and sculptors to make the statue over a period of six months. Beyoncé's new wax figure is now on display in New York. Singer Doja Cat is beefing with her own fans. She posted on Meta's threads asking her fans to quit wasting their time on phones and get jobs. She even refused to say I love you to her fans, claiming she did not even know them. This sparked an outrage with her followers. She ended up losing over 200,000 followers on Instagram and threads. Doja Cat is famous for her songs Woman, Kiss Me More and Say So. 
actor Matt Damon revealed that he had refused to play the lead role in the blockbuster movie The Avatar. Damon also said that this cost him at least $250 million. He added that he denied the lead role since he was already shooting for a movie in the Bond franchise. In 2009, Avatar became the highest grossing film of all time, making almost $3 billion. Drama series Suits has broken worldwide streaming records. Suits now has 3.14 billion minutes of viewership on streaming platforms Netflix and Peacock. This comes four years after its last episode was aired on TV. Suits is an American drama series that portrays the career trajectory of a New York City law firm. And finally, Randy Meisner, the founding member of the rock band The Eagles, has died at the age of 77. The band announced the tragic news on Thursday. The singer and bass guitarist was suffering from a pulmonary disease. The Eagles gave the world of rock hit, hit songs like Hotel California and Desperado. Meisner sang the famous songs Take It Easy and The Best of My Love.